People ask Reddit. What is a supernatural event that happened in your life that just cannot be explained? I had a phase in my mid-teens when I would read the obituaries in the local newspaper. I saw a name that was familiar as it was the same as a family friend. It had his full first, middle, and last names. I didn't say anything to my parents since I figured they already knew. A few days later my mom told me he died and I said I knew since I saw his obit. She said, he died last night in his sleep. I went back through the newspapers, my mom kept them for a week before throwing them out, but the obit wasn't there. When the real obit came out it had his first and last name but just his middle initial. This was almost 40 years ago and I still think about it. Early into my now wife and I's relationship I had a dream about her in childbirth. Very vivid, and long. Like I spent days in the hospital with her and everything was in a strange twilight. When it came time to deliver things went very wrong and she and baby ended up passing away. I woke up quite shook naturally but brushed it off. I am a nurse and have had to deal with traumatic OB situations before, and I chalked it up to me dealing with that stress through a dream. Six years later and my wife is pregnant, I have forgotten the dream by now. I get a call late into the third trimester while I am on shift. Wife is going to the ER for a bad BP. I get off my shift and go to meet her. As soon as I step into the room I remember my dream. It's the same damn room. Which is extra spooky because the hospital we were at wasn't even built when I had the dream. This is last year right when lockdown started, my wife has admitted they want to wait a week to deliver if possible. She will be kept in a twilight state until that time. So it's me in this room eerily isolated as the world around us is frozen and my wife is incoherent mere feet away. Lingering for days in this room I brushed off my dream, trying to manage my anxiety and stress. Come showtime my wife gets ready to begin pushing and it's exactly the same scenario as my dream. Things start going poorly, but the doctor thinks delivery is still possible. But at this point I finally freak out into full panic, and demand a c-section for my wife. The doctor I can tell wants to argue but I think my outburst made her step back and reassess the situation and she made the call for emergency c-section. It took 10 minutes for me to get taken back and as I'm in the ER I see my baby come out lifeless. They do everything they can and manage to resuscitate her. In the meantime my wife is doing poorly and they are scrambling to control her bleeding. I follow the baby out knowing there's really nothing I can do. Baby gets life flighted to another hospital, but before we go I see my wife stable and headed to the ICU. Both my wife and baby are critical but alive. Today they are both thriving and my baby is 16 months and just a tornado of energy. I don't know that they would be alive if not for that dream and it causing me to freak out and demand a change in plan. Many years ago, my parents had separated and my father was planning on taking a trip across the country to California. He was pretty excited about it. I talked to him the day before he's leaving, wish him well and tell him I'll talk to him after he gets to California. The day of his trip, he calls me and tells me he decided last minute not to go. Refuses to really get into why. Just as he changed his mind. Seemed really odd for something that he had been planning for a couple months. That night I'm sitting at my girlfriend's house and we're watching the news, and they report that US Air Flight 1493, the flight my dad was supposed to be on, collided with another aircraft while landing in Los Angeles. About 25% of the people on the flight were killed. Hard to know how my dad would have made out because it really depended on where you were sitting, front versus back of the plane. It was several months before he finally told me that night before he was supposed to leave, he had an extremely vivid dream that he died in a fiery plane crash. So vivid that it scared him out of flying that day. My dad is a Marine Corps Vietnam veteran who saw combat. I can only imagine how vivid the dream must have been, to scare him out of getting on that plane that morning. Edit, believe it or not I've never actually watched Final Destination. Now I have to see it. Woke up to a weird feeling, and saw an opaque silhouette of a little boy standing on the other side of the apartment facing me. I turned on my light and it was gone, when I turned my light off I saw it again. Flipped the light back on and went over there to make sure there was nothing that could be causing a weird shadow etc. There was nothing there that could have created that specific shape and it was standing in the pathway between my couch and wall so it couldn't have been a shadow. I turned my light off again and it was there, flipped it back on and slept with the light on for the rest of the night. Couldn't sleep without the light on for days low. Night before Thanksgiving three years ago I was across the country at my parents, driving back to theirs with my now wife from a friend's house. As we draw near, there is some type of bundle in the middle of the road, 
I stopped and pulled off to move it, and it turned out to be a barred owl that got clipped by a car. Long story short I spend the rest of that night getting the owl into a puppy cage, gave it some food and water, and the next day dropped it off at a wildlife rescue center. I got home the next week, all the way across the country, New Jersey to Oregon. I stepped outside and there was a barred owl sitting on my fence watching me. It was gone by the time I got back. But now I know I'm straight with all owls. I was biking down a country road I used to live on, I think I was 8 or 9, and on my way home I saw this small humanoid looking being run across the road, from one crop field into a cornfield. The only details I could make out, and I still vividly remember, was that it was completely covered in yellow, from neck to feet, and I think it has green on its head. I told my mom about it and all she could come up with was something about Cabbage Patch Kids. Never saw that thing again, but I still think about it from time to time. Edit, it was the size of a small child, about 50 feet away. My buddy and I were playing tennis one night at some courts by my house. Lights usually went out at 11, but for whatever reason that night they went off at a weird time, like 10.43. Whatever, that was weird. We collected our stuff and started walking to my car about 500 feet from the courts. My buddy's mom pulls up right as we're getting to my car and goes where the hell have you been? I called your cell and some guy was just laughing, it didn't sound like you. It was then my buddy realized he didn't have his phone on him. He told his mom to call his cell again and we could see it light up in the middle of the court we were playing on, by the net but still definitely in between the single lines, not at all where we kept the rest of our stuff. He goes and gets it and only has the one missed call from his mom, the one she just made. He asked if she called the right number and her call log showed three calls to his phone all that night. We can't explain why the cell was on the court or what happened with the calls or what happened with the lights. It was surreal. This didn't happen to me, but a very nice old man and his wife used to live a few streets over from us. Well she got very sick and his son flew in to help watch and care for her. A few weeks later she moved to hospice and later died. The night she died her husband and son drive home and they were talking about what to do for the funeral and her husband asked, do you think she'd want some person to attend and they both said they heard the dead mom slash wife in the back seat say no thank you. The night my friend took his own life I had a sudden urge to call him. I'm in Canada and he was in Atlanta at the time. I didn't call because I was out partying with friends and got the news the next day when I woke up. I feel like I missed the chance to save a friend but my dad says it was him letting me know he was gone but was going to be okay. I'm sorry I didn't reach out but. I regret it all the time. I live in a city and my brother lives in another city that is around 1000 kilometers away. He visits sometimes but not quite often. On an average of once every two years. On one day around seven years ago I was sleeping on the couch in the living room at my apartment. I woke up suddenly on my brother sitting just beside me and I was shocked slash surprised started greeting him and asking him about how is he doing and what pleasant surprise it was. Next thing I realized that this was a dream as the doorbell was ringing which woke me. Went to open the door and guess what? It was my brother who came to surprise us. This literally had me speechless. Don't have any explanation and I think sometimes you don't need to have one. I was home alone in high school. It looked like car headlights were shining through our kitchen door which didn't make sense because it was next to a field. I looked out the kitchen door and the lights were coming from about 50 feet off the ground. It was a row of three white lights and one red light. I opened the door and there was complete silence and the whole field was lit up. I closed the door quickly, turned around and it was gone. I was about 15 and trying to sleep but having an asthma attack. Late in the night I started hearing a rhythmic breathing from the floor next to the bed. It wasn't scary, more comforting. And it wasn't me, because my breathing sounded way more ducked up than that. It helped me calm down and get to sleep, even though I was still sick, I was able to get my hands on an inhaler in the morning. At the time I thought it was a friendly ghost. I later rationalized that maybe I was hearing a family member through the heating ducts. What I realized years later, when I had a dog, was that it had sounded exactly like a big dog sleeping next to the bed. So now I'm 50-50 on whether a ghost dog came to visit me, or my own dog time traveled back about 10 years before she was born to comfort me. Thank you for listening to another B-Town Reddit Stories episode. Hit the subscribe button and check out our channel for more stories. Let us know your opinion about this topic in the comments.